Uh, Dr. Ken Egan, you were a barman in the West pub one time. That's right. We in those days families helped each other out. So I used we had a pub in Galway, and Michael and Claire used to come up and Fehan from the West used to come up. Claire was my aunt. My mother's sister used to come up to Galway and help us, so I was delegated to go down to Westport and help out in the West for the week weekend and for the week or two afterwards because you used to have the carnival down in the um, field just below the mall there and um, he'd be busy all through that fortnight, so I'd be there for the end of July and the first fortnight in August and they used to come back up to us then and help for the races. Um, I can remember coming and Claire had put me in a bedroom up at the very top and you'd be looking out the bed had hardly fit into the room they, they lived over the building then and uh, when she'd get busy then she'd rent out the bedroom and I'd sleep on the floor in the bar upstairs they had a bar upstairs and a bar downstairs and she did the meals upstairs as well so it was a big business for the two of them they worked their back off, all they did was work, work, work. They never went on hold as much in those days. They had the restaurant upstairs, he had the big bar downstairs and he had a business, or he purchased a business on a small shop on the um, Bridge, Street, Bridge right? Street side of, of the west, up the street a bit, just well beside it. And he had all kinds of businesses there. Amongst the business he had there was an antique shop. He fancied himself as an antique dealer for a good few years and even sold me some furniture and he reckoned he was going to make his fortune in antiques but at the same time he was a very hard worker he used to be up I'd say he used to get up at about four o'clock half four every morning and turn on the the ovens he had a, a bakery there then he used to sell bread and do cakes and things like that and Michael no matter what happened he could be drinking until three o'clock in the morning but he'd be up to turn on the ovens for the lads coming in to make the bread. And he worked away at that. We'd work in the pub right through in the week weekend. You wouldn't close. You might close the doors outside, but you worked right through and you went up and you had a few hours sleep and you came down. And the people were there from, I'd say, Friday at dinner time right through until Monday morning. There was no closing. It was just get rid of the booze and get everybody in. There was loads of drinking, but there was never... Was that legal? To, no, you were supposed to close at, um, I'd say at the time then, it was half ten nearly, mm. but what you did was you closed the doors, mm. but the people were inside and people came and go, and nobody seemed to mind much. Mm. Um, so there was a couple of little businesses going on under that roof, there was? B&B, pub, He had the B&B, the restaurant, the antique shop and the bakery. And, and then, of course, he had the um, seaweed factory out on the Newport Road on the right hand side there. Himself and his brother John at the seaweed factory. I can remember going down on the lorry with my, with John and, and um, Nicholas Feehan from Kilme Kilmina. And we'd go out onto the islands for seaweed. And the lorry would go out and you had about six hours to fill the lorry and get it back off the island because the tide had come in and you had to get in and out with tides. And I can remember coming off the island with the lorry full of seaweed and seeing the, the road given underneath. There was so much on the on weight on the lorry. And Michael would be there. Then when you come back in, you'd have to empty the seaweed off the lorry for the next morning. And Michael would be there with the fork and he'd be helping as much as anybody else. And then he'd be running up to the pub. And to go back to Rig Sunday, would there be many people in the town that time? It was jammed. With jammed. People, jammed with people. My memory would well, like I wouldn't have seen a lot because you were behind the bar all the time. Like, but in those days, no more than the Galway races, Westport was just jammed uh, with people coming and going. They all wanted to eat and they all wanted to drink, and and they kept kept coming. Sure, the Rig was done during the night in those times. Did you ever lose yourself yeah. at night time? No, you weren't let up. No. Well, we were busy working. Like the two things I never did as a youngster was do the week or do the Galway races because we were just busy running businesses mm -hmm. and trying to make a few bob in those days. Making hay when the sun shines. Yeah, I can remember Claire like would have done the meals and Michael would have them drinking in the bar and he'd come out and he'd shout up the stairs that are thirteen more dinners, Claire, and she'd come out and stand at the top of the stairs and say thirteen effing dinners <laughs> more. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but she'd keep doing it, the two of them worked their back off, you know, they kept mm. it going all the time. Yeah, they were great characters, weren't they? 
they were they they'd come to Galway and they'd mm. be socialising until one or two in the morning, then they'd head off to Westport. They were coming home one night and they crashed the car out between Perthry and Westport. And all he was concerned about was the bottle of special whiskey he had in the back of the car that he didn't break it. But they were a, they were a great pair. They worked their back off. That's all they were doing, working in and out. Did he buy the pub or inherit it? He inherited it from his uncle, I understand. And, yeah. Was uh, it long in the fee in line? I don't know, not uh, really. Um, he got it off the uncle. He yeah. got it off his uncle and... Uh, He'd always be given that there was some fighting going on between him and the church over the deals between them. He was always given out about the church and, and uh, the house beside him. I'm not sure where or what the deal was there, but eventually it petered out anyway and he settled down a bit on it. Mm -hmm. But uh, the pub business was huge, like there'd be people coming in all sides. And then he had, he, I remember he had him, I think it was a Dunkerley, is it a Michael Dunkerley? Dunkerley, yeah. Dunkerley came from England or somewhere and stayed with them for a night or two and he got him to paint a wall. And the deal then was that Dunkerley had paint. He had all these paintings. He was the original John Hind pictures nearly. He'd have on the walls in the pub. Elwyn Dunkerley. Elwyn Dunkerley, was that his I name? I knew him, yeah. And uh, he did some fantastic paintings on the, on the walls and around the pub. And Michael kept them and gave him drink free in return for doing the paintings. And they were very good paintings, an awful pity they were lost actually, I'm sure. Barter. Mm. Mm. That's the way they went. Yeah. So you enjoyed it? I, or did you? I did, of course, yeah, it was great fun. We used to go did down. you get paid? Not at all, no. <laughs> sure, everybody helped each other out in those days. The, the male, the male, was it a male? It was a type of male. My, yeah. They came back up and helped in Galway, and we used to go up to Dublin and help my other uncle in the Nile in Dublin. That's the way and families would move, literally move around. Mm. But. Um, did you get to know anybody in Westport at time, or were you just in and out? No, mostly I'd go. I'd cycle down during the day when we were in, when we weren't busy in the pub. I'd cycle down to Feehan's in Kilmina. John Feehan had family down there, and Kathleen and um, Nicholas and Michael were the sons. Now they would have been younger than me, but they were there, and I'd go out um, on the lorry with John. John was cattle dealing in a big way, and then he was doing the seaweed. And you'd go, you had a great time in and out in the seaweed and, you know, it was great fun really, even though it was hard work. First time I ever went to the Cattle Mart in Dublin, probably the only time I ever went to the Cattle Mart in Dublin, was with John Feehan. I remember getting up in Westport at about one o'clock in the morning and he loaded up with cattle and we headed off to Dublin. And there was a mart then, um, just beyond the Phoenix Park on your left. You turned up left there at the new courthouse now and up along the, the way up there, there was a huge cattle mart on the right hand side up there. And I remember we went the whole night through with the, with the lorry load of cattle and then we unloaded them and the mart up there, it was in the city really. And uh, then we'd go across to this hotel for breakfast and everybody would have Wellingtons on and there was nothing but um, sawdust on the ground and it was a huge area and there was cattle everywhere. It was an amazing thing considering it was the centre of the city and he, John's whole objective would be to get some guy from England to buy the cattle and take them back to England and he'd go home then with, we'd, we'd end up, I think we got back into Westport at about six or seven in the evening. In those days the lorry drive from Westport must have taken us five or six hours. Mm. But uh, he did that. John would have done that regularly, every week. That was the 60s, no, was it? That would have been in the late 50s, early 60s, 60s yeah. yeah. Ireland was a very agricultural country then, wasn't it? So. It was, and one of the first times I ever came to Westport, uh, <coughs> my parents put me on the bus in Galway to come to Westport, and I got the bus, you got the bus to Castle Bar, and then I had a bike with me because I used cycle in now to Kilmina. And I had the bike in Westport and I was sitting down outside. Um, there were two elderly ladies that owned the pub there. It was Flannery's after that, but they had a pub there and I was sitting on the chair outside waiting for this bus to come f to bring me to Westport. And somebody came out and said to me, you should get up on the bike there and put your case up. It's only four miles over the road. And <laughs> cycle it, so I got the case and four miles is no bother to me and put the the ba the case on the back of the bike and started cycling the four miles. But anyway, eventually I got to the top of 
this big hill and the bus was coming behind me and I waved down the bus driver and said I'd geez I couldn't go on anymore I'd this four miles was, and he said oh no no I said throw the bike up on top of the bus and he was saying oh no no I couldn't do that he said and I said well sure I want to get to Westport and he said all you have to do is free wheel down the hill she on hill she on hill and uh, yeah, I, remember right. I, I free wheel yeah he was too, too much trouble for him to put the bike on top of the bus but uh, I free wheeled down the hill and I could see Claire and Michael outside looking at the bus and I, was, I wasn't on it, but I free wheeled in, but that was my first visit to Westport. In the front door of the West.